Um, now, let me uh, reintroduce Dr. Uh, Gernt, who is going to continue to uh, tell us the story of this uh, first uh, gentleman uh, and how he was uh, treated. Dr. Gernt. Thank you, Dr. Hawking. Um, this gentleman uh, presented and had extensive disease that could not be addressed with surgical resection. Uh, in that scenario, we evaluated whether we could do regional therapy for him to try and control the disease and extend uh, lifespan. As Dr. Hawking already mentioned, with regional cancer therapy, you need to keep in mind that occult disease outside the area you're treating uh, could be present and will not be affected by the treatment you're offering. The regional image-guided therapy modalities that are currently available are listed on this slide. Chemoembolization is what we'll see today, and that involves injecting chemoembolic material into the hepatic arterial circulation while sparing the portal venous circulation. Uh, radiofrequency ablation and cryoablation are both local methods that use heat in the case of radiofrequency ablation and cold in the case of cryoablation to kill tissues. They can be used in other organs besides the liver. Chemoembolization and radioembolization are both limited to use in the liver. Radioembolization is similar to chemoembolization in some ways, but does not involve chemotherapy. It involves small particles which are impregnated with yttrium-90 radioactive material, so they combine arterial occlusion with localized radiation therapy that has very limited permeation. The chemoembolization is performed by mixing standard chemotherapeutic drugs with a medication called ethiodol, which is an oil-based contrast derived from poppy seed oil. That is administered into the artery feeding the area that you wish to treat. The treatment is usually performed in a low bar fashion or treating about half the liver at a time to minimize overall chemical irritation in the liver. This is possible because of the specifics of liver circulation and basically because tumors tend to be supplied by the artery, whereas the normal liver is more dependent on portal vein flow, this allows us to selectively insult the tumor's blood supply without insulting the normal liver supply to the same degree. It's estimated that this allows between 100 and 125 fold higher dose to the liver tumor than what can be accomplished by IV chemotherapy. The overall lesser, lesser toxicity to the rest of the body is accomplished by getting this medication to the liver and keeping it in the liver so that exposure to heart, bone marrow, skin, and gut is minimized. Side effects like diarrhea, uh, neuropathy, skin changes, and heart toxicity are therefore less than if it was given in the venous form. This is one image uh, that I'll show you just before we roll the video, which is an arteriogram image from a chemoembolization of this type of tumor, but not in this particular patient. I think it illustrates nicely how this material deposits very focally in the lesion and not to the same degree in the background liver, which in this case was a background of cirrhosis. If we could roll the video clip now, we'll watch some footage from this procedure. This procedure is actually the 10th procedure for this patient. The patients come into our room uh, awake. This procedure is performed with conscious sedation, usually at a level one initially, and then deepened to a little bit deeper sedation later in the procedure. The level of sedation is similar to what one might have for a colonoscopy or an ERCP. We are prepping the groin area there. We usually use a femoral artery approach, similar to what would be used for a heart catheterization. And as you're watching now, we're doing the local anesthetic, which is lidocaine and, and stings for just a couple of seconds. The patient at this point has already had some Versed and some fentanyl to sort of take the edge off of that sting. We're going to use a 21 gauge needle to puncture the artery. And this is all done through a small incision, uh, which we just made that uh, will not require sutures or anything more than a Band-Aid afterwards. The artery is accessed and then a small guide wire is placed and over that guide wire the catheter uh, is then placed and we change to another guide wire that allows the sheath placement. These procedures are performed in the angiography suite in OR compatible room. Uh, they take about an hour and a half to two hours per case depending on whether the anatomy has been defined previously or not. Uh, this is the exchange catheter that we're putting in now and next will be changing that uh, for a sheath, which is what we'll work through for the remainder of the procedure. At this point, the patient feels some pressure at the leg, uh, but it's generally not particularly uncomfortable. 
Uh, they are relatively awake at this point because one of the first angiographic runs we need to do is imaging the portal vein. For that run, they need to hold their breath for about 12 seconds, so they need to be relatively awake at least to be able to follow instructions. Later, when we put in the chemotherapy, we tend to sedate people a little bit more, and they're usually dozing uh, in and out through that part of the procedure. What we'll be doing next here is placing a catheter, and that catheter will be selectively placed in the celiac axis origin, which is the blood vessel that supplies branches to the spleen, the stomach, and the liver, as well as small bowel. That imaging is important to lay out the anatomy and a roadmap, so to speak, so that we know where we need to be going. This particular patient uh, does have uh, some normal va variant anatomy, which is fairly common. 25% of patients will have some type of normal variant anatomy in terms of their arterial supply to the liver. On this picture in the right upper quadrant, you see some dark spots, and that's residual material within the liver. This is his celiac axis, and you can see the big vessel going off to the right on the screen is a splenic artery. The vessel going to the left is the common hepatic artery, which splits into two vessels, and the smaller of those is the one we're going to treat today. This run is going to image the splenic artery and the portal vein. The catheter is being moved out now selectively into the splenic artery so that that can be injected. If we image out to the venous phase, then we can opacify the portal vein. The artery will be much more dense at the beginning of this run, and then if you watch into the venous phase, you'll be able to see contrast sort of wafting across the middle of the image over towards the liver, which is on your left uh, side of the screen. And that's the main portal vein uh, with some right and left portal venous branches showing up as well. This patient had a widely patent portal vein. And again, the two densities showing up on the non-subtracted images are the residual chemoembolic material. This is his right hepatic artery arising from the superior mesenteric artery, the aberrant anatomy that he has. This branch uh, was the major feeder to this tumor, supplying about two-thirds of the tumor, and then about one-third of the tumor was supplied by the small branch that we were actually treating at this session. The previous study that he had uh, in that artery is actually a little bit more elucidating than, than this one, but I'm going to show you a run into that right hepatic artery from the current study, and then we'll flash back to what it looked like before he had as many treatments. The tumor vascularity has changed quite a bit. So this is what it looks like currently, and you can see some abnormal vessels and the tumor, but this is what it looked like before we had gotten very many treatments in. Uh, there's a lot of tumor blush, all the gray blotchy areas that are showing up are tumor, that big round area is all the main tumor mass and that vascularity has diminished significantly with his previous treatments. He's had five previous treatments to this vessel, and today's treatment will be the fifth treatment to his left hepatic artery, which is the vessel you're seeing now. That supplied the left or medial aspect of the tumor and has that same grayish tumor blush that we saw with the right. Those are the monitors that we're looking at while we're doing the procedure. And uh, next we will be moving the catheter super selectively into the area that we wish to treat. This will be a micro catheter um, placed inside a five French catheter. So that allows us to get out farther into these small branches where we can do the treatment. That is the bifurcation of the left hepatic artery shown on the screen there, which is where we're going to do the treatment for this uh, procedure. This is the five French catheter doing a run and then moving out towards the origin of that left hepatic artery and now the small microcatheter is being placed into that left hepatic artery near its bifurcation or splitting branch point. Both of these vessels are supplying some branches to the tumor. If only one of them was, we would go out into just one to isolate it.